All right, now in this video, we'll see second application with PLC interfacing. So in this application, we'll see completeness example. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do now, and then I'll explain you how it is done. So you have these bottles here. So you can see in my camera, I have a crate and I have six bottles inside. And right now, all the bottles are in the level of measurement, so they are in good state. So if we want to measure that in the PLC, I will open the PLC again, and it's the same program, I didn't change anything. Just you have to change the app number. So this is app number two. And this is changed because here, if you see my application, the app which is valid is second one, completeness application. So this is true in this case. This is also off like the last exercise. I go back to monitor. So my app two means this will not be executed, but this block will be executed, which is completeness. So two defines which block to execute here, all right? So now, just by changing to, I'm going to trigger it. And that's the database for my completeness TV. So you will see here, hardware ID is 270, which is for my camera. And tracking is true. There is no error at the moment, no new data. Tracking is okay, all ROI is good because I executed before. Now this ROI has some values here, one, two, three, four, five, six, because I have six region of interest. If you have more, you can open this array. So maximum, I think you can have up to 64 region of interest. All right, so I'm gonna trigger it now. So you can see in my IFM, I have no current state. I have reset the statistics and let's trigger it one. I modify it to one, this is triggered and you will see some values are here. And in the camera, you can see bottles are here. So right now it's passed, there's no problem. If I go to my results, you can see some values are coming. So these values of ROI 543210 are coming here. 4, 1, 7, minus 5, 1, and 0. So these are the value coming from here, okay? Now I'm going to remove one bottle and we'll see what are the values which will come in my DB, okay? So let's remove one bottle. So I remove one bottle. I have to trigger it again. So I will go to modify 0 and modify 1. So in this case, you will see in your DB, ROI4 has status 7. Status 7 means it's underfill. And if we see the IFM software, you can see ROI4 is underfilled. So that's why this is, this is reflecting in the PLC in this DB as 7. So when you have a 7 status, you can imagine status, not the value, because here the value is 7. When you have status 7, you can imagine your container is underfill. Okay, so let's take out one more bottle to see um, the results. Now I'm going to trigger it again. So let's modify to zero and modify to one again. In this case, you see status seven here and status seven here. So ROI zero and ROI four are underfill. We can verify that from here, all right? So this was about how you can count the bottles which bottle is present, which is not present. Now what we can also do is let's try for overfill. So I'm gonna fill the bottles and make one more extra bottle to show overfill. So you can see in my camera, I have overfilled the container. In this case again, I'm going to my VLC and trigger it again. So modify to zero, modify to one. And now for overfill, you have a status six. So you can see there six, 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 because three region of interest are overfilled. We can verify that in the camera like this. Maybe you can't see it here. Let me see if there's a better way to view that. Yeah, you can see that 2D format. So these region of interest are overfilled. Okay, so if I change the bottle, now I put on the other side, I go to my VLC, trigger it again, zero and one. So now these segments are overfilled. All right. So in this view, you can view more clearly in this 2D format if it's overfilled or underfilled. So let's take out the bottle and trigger it again. Modify to one. And now everything is fine. It's in a good state. So just take one bottle out. And you can also see here status tracking. Okay, all ROI is good, that's true. So if any, any ROI has a problem, this will be false. So let's turn it off first and on. So you can see here it's false because one ROI is underfilled, which is ROI four. 
So this is about how you can get the values from your process application in the PLC. And furthermore, if you're good in PLC programming, you can also make some triggering from your HMI or you can do triggering from your uh, some sensor if you like. And you can see these values in your HMI or you can store it in your MySQL database. However you want to do, you can do that. And if you are new to Siemens programming, I have Siemens PLC course, I have a basic course and advanced course, which you can learn in our online learning platform. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you like this video series about IFM camera and Siemens PLC interfacing. You can subscribe to my channel. You can like this video or share this video and we'll see what we have more in this channel. So I'll see you soon. Thank you.